my name is Lindell Soul, and I will be your virtual Jane Jacobs guide for today's walk. I work with the North Brooklyn Park Alliance, which is a local nonprofit that advocates for equitable, vibrant, and connected open space in our district. And they've been doing this hard work for almost 20 years now. Today, we're going to talk about a mayoral program called Open Streets with our friends from two very popular corridors of the program in North Brooklyn. But before we do, let's take a moment and talk about the birthday girl, Miss Jane Jacobs. As many of you know, Jane Jacobs is considered a famous urban activist. So famous in fact that each year in celebration of her life and her life's work, people all over the world come together on her birthday and give these kinds of uh, walks in her name. However, Jane didn't consider herself an activist. She considered herself a writer. Jane came from a middle-class family that lived in an industrial coal town in the middle of Pennsylvania. She moved to New York during the Great Depression in the 1930s, where she began her life as a freelance writer. In fact, her writing career was bookended on one side by the Great Depression and on the other by the events of 9-11 in 2001. She's best known for rallying her neighbors in the West Village to stop the city's master builder of a time, Robert Moses, who's also pretty well known, and his idea to put a highway straight down the center of Washington Square Park. Totally crazy, I know, a highway in the middle of the park. Needless to say, that was not one of his most popular ideas. And with that wind, she took the wind right out of his sails and changed the course of how the city planned for the street which kind of brings us to the space here today. We're in a city street that runs through the park that has no car traffic on it, no cars at all. How did that happen? Well, in cities all over the world, people are looking at public space. How can it be used better, be made more equitable, and become green, smart, and connected? As many of you may have noticed, over the last two decades, both here in New York City, across our nation, and around the world, most major metropolitan cities have been experimenting with an arsenal of design types to calm and democratize the streetscape. Everything from dedicated bus lanes to curb extensions, things called gateways, bike lanes, pedestrian plazas, DMAP streets, parklets, and even the newest and oftentimes controversial, open streets. So, here today, I'm standing in a DMAP street. A DMAP street is any portion of a street that was removed from the city map, most likely through a legal process like Yearlip. And it was replaced with something like maybe housing or some kind of other public amenity, but in this case, it added to the parkland. In 2013, North Brooklyn Park Alliance led the cause to DMAP this stretch of street to help ease the burden of overcrowding at McCarran Park. Today, the space is most cherished as a community meeting place for the neighborhood's weekly farmer's market, the CSA pickup, the composting drop-off, or just as a general civic engagement square. Demapping streets like this one gives communities more space. Space that's flexible, space that's malleable, space that can adjust to the city's needs as it grows and changes over time. And as we all know, in cities large and small, space is always of a premium and how it's used is usually a potential source of confrontation. One theory of Jane Jacobs, which I believe helps lower the tension in the city and how it plans for its streetscape, is the argument for creating physical diversity within an urban environment. Physical diversity, what does that mean? Well, physical diversity or mixed use extends not only to the kinds of buildings you see, whether they're all new or all old or a mix of the two, but also how the city plans for its streetscapes, how it looks at public design, public art, public access, what kind of places it creates so that all people, all different kinds of people from all different places feel comfortable and at home in that space. One program that looks to diversify how the street is used is called the Open Streets Program. The Open Streets Program, as I mentioned, is a mayoral program that ex was expanded and extended during the pandemic last spring. It prioritizes pedestrians and cyclists by transforming streets into public spaces. North Brooklyn had up to seven open street corridors at the height of the pandemic. Today, we're gonna check in with two of them. The first stretch that we're gonna take a look at is Sharon Street over in East Williamsburg. It runs right alongside Cooper Park. Joanne from the Friends of Cooper Park is gonna give us a view of what an open street looks like on an average day there. 
Hi, my name is Joanne and today I'm going to walk you through the Sharon Street Open Street Program and go over a few things that makes our Open Street Program both unique and successful. So Sharon Street is a beautiful tree-lined block located between Metropolitan Avenue and Massbeth Avenue right here in East Williamsburg. Um, we are actually the last residentially zoned block um, at the edge of the East Williamsburg Industrial Zone. And I think what's really unique about our street is that prior to COVID-19, it already had a lot of infrastructure in place that would make it eventually a really successful gathering space for the community. So directly north of Sharon Street, we have Cooper Park. And Cooper Park is a really, really important green space and fixture in our community. Um, like I mentioned, because we are located at the edge of industrial zoning, this whole neighborhood has a long history of poor air quality, air pollution, and high childhood asthma rates. So um, Cooper Park is a crucial green space in allowing people to have somewhere to socialize, to exercise, to just take a walk. And Cooper Park also has an advocacy group called Friends of Cooper Park. And Friends of Cooper Park meets every weekend to weed and to clean up the park. And I think naturally, um, it is really beneficial to our Open Streets program because like Lynn mentioned, the Open Streets program is largely led by volunteers and Friends of Cooper Park was the first to step up and um, take care of our barricades when the program began. Um, Friends of Cooper Park also teamed up with the Sharon Street Block Association recently to install these beautiful planters. Um, right here we have some azaleas, some trees and some marigolds growing. And these planters are awesome because they make it so that our street will only require one barricade and it's easier for folks to get in and out of the block when they only have to move one instead of two. Um, they were designed and donated by a local artist. This is just a close up of the other planter right here. And these planters are just also maintained by our group of volunteers that just sign up to um, water the planters regularly and make sure that the plants are happy and healthy. As you can see, um, Sharon Street is a nice, wide, one-way street. Um, I actually grew up on the block and lived here my whole life, and back in the day in the 90s, it was actually a tight two-way street. And um, one of my neighbor's children got hit by a car, and the block advocated to turn the street into a one-way street instead for street safety reasons. And I like telling the story because I think it really shows that um, traffic doesn't have to stay one way forever and that instead um, street design needs to adapt to the changing needs of the communities that they service. Just walking down the block and then also going to point out a few other features that makes our block um, unique in a nice little green space. So the Department of Environmental Protection also installed these rain gardens a few years ago. Um, these rain gardens are also taken care of by friends of Cooper Park and they are really great in mitigating some of our stormwater runoff. And as you can see, we have a lot of children that play in Cooper Park. And when the street became closed off, um, it became the open street became a really good way for children to have a little more space and learn how to rollerblade, how to skateboard, and how to ride bikes. So I think all in all, this open street is a huge asset to the community. That was amazing. Thanks, Joanne. Now we're going to take a look at our second open street, which is called Berry Street. This one is actually the second longest open street in New York City, and it runs all the way from the south side of Williamsburg to the very mouth of Greenpoint. We're going to meet up with Alana from the North Brooklyn Open Street Community Coalition. She's gonna show us what a normal day on her open street looks like. Hey there, I'm Alana. Um, I'm a volunteer with the North Brooklyn Open Streets Community Coalition, and I'm here to show you what it's like on an open street, on a day-to-day -day on Berry Street. As you can see, this is a beautiful open street. Um, allows for multiple modes of transportation. That's the reason I think open streets are so important, is that you get a flex of uses. So um, space that used to be dedicated to cars can now be used for people, for dogs, for kids, for rollerbladers, for bikers. Um, it's a really great way to expand the amount of space and really approach spatial equity, which uh, most of the time people don't have um, on the streets of New York. One of the reasons I think Barry in particular is a really good uh, example of an open street is the fact that, as you can see, the sidewalks on Barry are extremely narrow. So when the pandemic hit, opening up this space for um, 
the neighborhood was really important, I think, to give people access to the outdoors and be able to safely social distance. One thing I'll say um, is we have a very dedicated group of volunteers, and right now they come out every morning at 8 a.m. and every evening at 8 p.m., and they move the barriers in place to make this street possible. I think in the future, we would like to see a shift away from that and not have a reliance on volunteer labor. It would be really great if we could have support from the city um, to operate this open street and um, be able to hire people <laughs> to do this work instead of having it be all volunteer run. Um, one of the other things I'll say is I think Barry's really great because you get a mix of retail and residential. I really am excited about open streets and I would love to see this program continue. I think another thing we would like to see um, is having some sort of um, street redesign so that there's this self-enforcement of um, reducing car traffic on these streets and giving people more ability to use them however they see fit. Well, thanks for having me and invite you to come out and check Barry Street for yourself. Thanks. Thanks, Alana, that was amazing. So while it's too early to say if open streets and programs like it will bring the city the space it so desperately needs, we do think Jane Jacobs would be awfully proud at our continuous attempt at it. So with that acknowledgement, I'd like to leave you all with a message from our dear host of the annual Jane's Walk in New York City, the Municipal Art Society, or MAS. In addition to organizing Jane's Walk each year, MAS does the hard work of advocacy and education on the public's behalf every year for the last 125 plus years. They are at the forefront of sensible city planning, preservation, and policy. I'm grateful to have them in the city, and I'm delighted to have all of you join us here today. I hope you'll get involved in their organization and in ours, and that you feel empowered to go out into your communities and tell its story. So thank you all, and I hope to see you in the streets.